Welcome. I'm Meredith. This is the Oasis Spiritual Empowerment Tarot, all about tarot, oracle, and empowering you. And uh, we have another unboxing. This one has taken me so, so long to get to, and it's one of the ones that I've been most excited for. And that's really kind of the reason. You know, I wanted to sort of savor it, I guess. Um, but it's really taken too long. So this deck, which I don't know why I try to make it a surprise. You know from the title. This is the Offset Gypsy Tarot. And it is by James Jacob Pieri. Now this is one of the decks that I got when I was at Newt's at the Red Feather table. And um, James was there. And we actually um, talked for a good amount of time. And a lovely, lovely person. Um, and he's in New Jersey. So that gives him, gives him bonus points. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited to see this deck. Now, it's not a new deck, uh, but it is new to me. I vaguely remember when it came out. Um, I think when it did, I was still, um, I was, I was, I had branched off to other decks, but I think I still was primarily uh, using my Thoth deck, so I wasn't getting a lot of decks. So, I love this box. Now, it does have the separated decks, and it is too big. I'm, you know, certainly going to be using um, a bag. But, I like the box. I may have to repurpose the box. So, let me pull these pull the binding off and then we'll take a quick look at the guidebook oh this does not want to go okay. and now I discovered I have two or three videos that I already filmed and I thought I uploaded <laughs> I thought I uploaded at least one of them um, and I don't think I did so, um, I think two of them are from my concussion period, so that's probably why, but these are the backs. It does have, uh, tax, but it, I don't know, it fits to me. I don't mind it at all, but let's take a quick look at the book. So now this is illustrated by Rebecca Stotzenberg and Heather Scott. So we have the story of the Elsa Gypsy Tarot forward, and then it gets right into the cards. Looks like there's two pages per card for the majors, and one for all of the minors. Then we have some spreads, Asa Gypsy Tarot advice, mantras, and practices to live by and meditate on, notes, and about the author. Oh, I, thank you, I love that. Um, we have, uh, pronunciation in here. So, um, we do have, we have big full color images. So really, we have one page, um, of text for all the majors. We have astrological associations, traditional meanings, offset gypsy meaning, and a story plot. Um, let's take a look at the cards and then we'll get a little more into the guidebook. I feel like you're far away. Let's get you pulled in. I love the pug. 
He's so cute. Did I show you the gelding is really nice? And the cards feel... What do they feel? There's another deck. Um, it was another red feather deck, which makes sense. Um, similar card stock. It's really nice. It's a, it's a nice thickness, and they feel kind of... Kind of plasticky, but in a really nice way. Not sticky. Very nice matte. Um, they feel very durable. I love this card. So it's a fabulous magician. And the high priestess with her scroll. We don't have pillars, but we do have the, the two different colors of tapestry. And the candle. And the, the goddess form. That's oh, a spirit shaker. I have one of those. That's that's what um, probably every culture has a, a different name for it. But um, she. look at her legs. Does she have horse feet. I don't know, that was, I don't know. Love the Emperor. Unaquai, a Omnia. The, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means either. Um, no, I'm not even gonna guess. I expect it's in the guidebook. Otherwise, I can Google it. I love the little crystal balls. And each one, I don't know if you can say, each one's different. Just fabulous. I love the chariot, and still with this little puggy. Ah, oh, and justice is perfect. Interesting hermit. Now there is like a an overarching story that's in the guidebook. So like I said, we'll get to that. We'll read maybe we'll start with the full card. Just so we get the beginning of the story and maybe pick one more. I love this. I love that it's like a dance. This is fabulous, too. Really, really interesting.
love that we have the two devils. don't have the tower crumbling yet. It's just on fire. I don't know what that is. That's something. I don't think people have been knocked out just yet. Love this. Love this so much. And this. Very sassy characters, and I am here for it. Beautiful sun. So much better than that creepy baby. I'm just saying. Really, really nice. There's a lot of um, depth to these cards. There's a lot that, that you can pull in the imagery. Um, am I missing? Maybe it'll be toward the end. We'll see. Um, so we'll start with the two. So now this is um, basically a, a pip deck, but I mean, it's beautiful. Love the plants. the ace. How beautiful is that? Love that. So of course there's the king. Now here we have the, the cavalier. Right? Page. Beautiful queen. And I like that we have the cars, but do we have them? No. So we have the, you know, the diamonds here on the quartz, but not on the miners. Um, that's just a nice touch. That's beautiful. This keeps wanting to fall. Oh wow, look at that. Beautiful. Really, really lovely. Is that like a, a sculptor's tool?
There's something, it's so clean. Um, and I love the patterns they make. Yeah, it's like it just, it kind of pulls me into the pattern. I'm weird about patterns though. Patterns and puzzles. You know the old uh, myths about like there's certain types of, of like fae and, and demonic things and, and various spirits that if, uh, if they're chasing you, if you throw like rice on the ground, they'll have to stop and count the rice or... Like, if there's a puzzle, they'll have to stop and do the puzzle. Sometimes I feel like that. <laughs> Love this. <clears throat> oh, he's fabulous. Oh, and I didn't even notice. Was that with the other pages like that? Oh, let's see. Wait, are they all like that? Am I? No. Oh, that's fabulous. Let's see. That's really clever. Love that. Okay. <laughs> really, really clever. Well done. I like that. Such interesting patterns. Oh, wow. Look at this. Fabulous. And again, we have the... Beautiful. Okay. Um, let's let's take a look at the full, and then I'll shuffle and we'll put one more. But just I feel like we should start at the beginning with this one. As I flip to the back. All right. So. <clears throat> We have um, astrological associations. We have Gemini and Aquarius for the fool. Um, you know, the title, number zero. So for a traditional meaning, <clears throat> start of new beginnings, a journey, adventure, and call of the unknown. 
naive or inexperienced, daring, a stranger, humor and humility, a performer or performance, a moment to take a chance, test of loyalties, fresh directions, playing the fool, fooling another, or being fooled. Now the offset gypsy meaning. That first step taken, yet not knowing where fate could lead, following a dream and ignoring all of the realities, going it alone and learning to trust intuition and how to learn from mistakes. Practice makes perfect. How others perceive someone, oh, what was that? is different, unique, and true to their personal convictions. Putting it all out there for chance, for humiliation or victory. Doing without knowing or overthinking. Learning consequences after the fact. Boldly and blindly going after one's destiny without a stable plan. Now we have the story plot. A stranger appears out of nowhere to a new and very magical place. Surveying the landscape and looking toward unknown horizons, investigating where the first place to begin his adventure should be, choosing a direction in seeking out his destiny, equipped with a sack full of metaphysical implements, a funny-faced little pug named Mr. Bojangles and pure ambition. From our view of the background, much foreshadowing predicts ups, predicts up and coming encounters, places, and characters. His next step begins the adventure and journey. And you know, I love that this is so big, so you can really see some of the finer details. Um, and, oh, speaking of big, and <laughs> so it is a, a fairly big size deck. It's, it's a little bit, um, uh, taller and wider than a standard tarot, although you could if you wanted to. If you trimmed away the borders, but you'd lose these guys, unless you trimmed around them. In, in this too. I mean, theoretically, you could trim it down, but don't, I don't, I won't do it, but you could, and then it would be like a standard size. Shuffles beautifully. Um, so let me, I'm going to lay some out, and then we'll just pick one more to read. Um, actually, I'm interested to see uh, what we have, uh, for the miners. Um, so maybe we'll read one of those to get just, like, a better idea. Okay. So let's just lay some out. No. Why am, I'm always cockeyed, aren't I? I'm always leaning left. I am left-handed. Maybe that's why. All right. I really like these. I really like the size and the feel of the cards. Love the colors, and I don't mind a pip deck. Um, for me, sometimes it's nice. It's a, it's like a cleaner space. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes um, as much as I love to get immersed in a lot of um, imagery and and feelings. Um, Pip decks, uh, it's just, it's like cooler, cleaner, it's kind of like easier to breathe. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's like leaving this 
bustling, beautiful city, right? With so much to, to see and smell and taste and explore and stepping out into just an open meadow, you know? That's kind of how it feels to me. So, um, while it's, it's not really my go-to standard for decks, um, some of my favorite decks are, well, like, one of my favorites is a, is a Marseille deck, um, which is, you know, essentially, you know, Pips, um, love him and I love when I first looked at him I thought he was very young looking and then I looked again I thought you know he's really kind of older and now I see him both ways which is fabulous I don't know if that was on purpose or it's my eyes being weird but either way I am here for it um so yeah let me pull let's get let's get the five of swords <clears throat> And just see what the book says about that. Oh, so, um, right, so for only the majors are part of the story. Um, then when we get to the minors, we just have really some, some keywords. And then it's kind of an interesting um, setup. So for the aces, it gives us the element. And then we have like four keywords, right? So the ace of cups, we have true love, absolute happiness, complete abundance, trust feelings. But then when you get into like the two of cups, we have Venus and Cancer. Not exactly love at first sight, but love that develops. Loyalty, new relationship, allies, kindred spirits, intuition, and feelings, companions. So, um, and they are, they are done by number. Kind of surprised they don't get into the numerology, only because of the way it's structured. Um, but that's okay. And then when we get into the quartz, um, <laughs> so like Queen of Cups, we have Pluto and Scorpio, a controlling woman, trust is earned, intimidating and demands respect gives no second chances, sensitive feelings, and protects them with a biting tongue. A mistress has powers. So that's interesting. So, and then instead of page, we have prince slash princess. Then we have some spreads. <laughs> you heard those growls, right? So whatever growled that first noise was not my dog. That's all I'm saying. Then my dog responded to that. I'm hoping it was my cat. But it sounded really deep. I don't know. All right. Uh, so then we have tower advice, mantras, practices to live by, and meditate on. Just fabulous. And then we have space to make notes. And this is about the author. Um, he is. He he is a character in just the most delightful way. Um. Yeah, so, and I didn't read, I didn't read this because there isn't that much, but I do want to read, let's read The Devil. Okay. 
just because I want to get more of the story. Let's just focus on that. Um, so we do have, you know, Saturn, Capricorn. Um, traditional meanings. We'll read the offset gypsy meaning. So we have trouble, temptation, giving in to one's dark side, living too close to the edge, unredeemable, when greed takes over, being consumed with selfishness, causing pain without any remorse, powers of evil looking for outlets, excess in behavior, want at any cost. Now the story plot. The devil assumes assumes pleasing appearances as learned here, seductive, alluring, and all-around wicked. These two characters are really one entity that uses whatever tricks necessary to undermine the pure of heart, ever present to deter the adventurer from seeking their rightful destiny. This dark presence tempts the best of them with fleeting fame and misfortune at a very high price. Amid the checkered floor of false initiation is the distorted broken mirror of mistrust and two green false flames of disinformation and corrupt knowledge. Enter if you dare. Really, really interesting. And again, I love, look at, look, see the shadow. So I didn't even, and it, it's really obvious. I don't know why. I was focused on them, I think, more. But I love that. Notice the, the shape of the flame. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, so let me know what you think. You know, is this, again, this deck has been around. So is this one that you have? So this, oh, I should have read this too, but <clears throat> I won't. I won't keep you, but, um, but let me know what you think. I'm really excited to, to, to work with this. And there's another deck. And I can't think of what. I almost had it, and it went away. But there's a deck that would be perfect with this. And I can't think of what it is right now. But I will think of it. But uh, I, I love the aces are just gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> so let me know what you think. Oh, you know what might be interesting with this? The white fly tarot. I wonder. And oh, by the way, his new uh, Kickstarter is only... I, I don't know when I'm going to post this, but hopefully... Don't miss it. Because <laughs> I... I want that deck to happen. Um, it's an oracle and it's fabulous. And I think it would go really well with this. The art styles, I think, kind of really vibe. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Okay, I just had to add this because I think these are fabulous together. Uh, so this is the White Fly Tarot, and it's by Danilo Sinino. Now, his Oracle Kickstarter did finish, but it funded, so I am so happy. Um, I'm like 99% positive you can still get this on his website, and hopefully, you know, the Oracle um, will be there after the Kickstarter, so. But, look at how nice these are together. I just feel like... So, and the, the card stock's very different, but it's complimentary to me. Like, they just, uh, they feel nice in the hands together. Ah, yeah, oh, look at that. So, yeah, I just wanted to, to show them. Because I think they're great together. Um, but let me know what you think. Love this. Now, I'm, I'm just going to add, because um, it, it kind of makes me mad. So there was a Kickstarter. I don't know if it funded. I kind of hope it didn't. 
um, using this image. It was not his. They took it and uh, changed it a little bit, but it, it's clearly his art. Now, um, when I saw it, I, I actually reached out to him and he said that he did have some images that he put out on sites that, you know, made them available for free, but he's not credited or anything. And I, I think that's really gross. So just kind of putting it out there. So if you see this in another deck, um, if, you know, if, if the creator is not Danilo Sanino, just saying, that's his art. But, um, yeah, I think it's fabulous. So, anyway, just be wonderful to yourself. Be really, really wonderful because you deserve the best, only the best, all the best. And that is my wish for you.